Ooh. Pokedan.tcg here with uh, one uncut, unedited video to rule them all. Sorry, we're staring at my window right now, or my mirror. We've got a little Topps 1989 game tips, some Ninja Turtles. Ooh, Reverse Hollow Legendary Collection, Ivysaur. Some of the most beautiful Pokemon cards ever made right there. <gasps> Look at that Generations Radiant Collection. Flareon! Ooh, little Rhyperior. He's just there because he never gets any love. Rayquaza! Venusaur. Caradar! Some Final Fantasy. Eee. Look at this Fran. What up, guys? All right, Pokedan.tcg here. Hey, there's me. Ooh. All right, so a lot of videos. Um, a lot of... This is a PSA video. This is where we talk about PSA. That's all we're going to do all day PSA today. So um, why am I making this? What am I doing? I even wrote notes because there's a lot of stuff I want to cover. Okay, so uh, PSA returns. That's what this video is about. It's about a lot of misinformation related to PSA submitting. A lot of just stuff that isn't necessarily true and all the tips and tricks you need to get a gem in 10 or get a lot of them so where am i gonna put this put this right here i'm gonna move the camera so it's you know i'm not holding it the whole time and we're gonna get to work here uh but long story short what this video is about is about psa about submitting to psa um this is more of like an advanced psa video we are not going to be talking about how to submit to PSA. We are going to be talking about tips and tricks for getting a 10. Uh, noticed, so my DMs on Instagram get blown up and it's always, hey, uh, stuff related to PSA, whether it's, will you send the cards for me? Which no, of course not. Um, don't ever use a middleman service. Learn how to use PSA yourself. It's very easy, go to their website. Uh, so easy a caveman could do it. Uh, but when it comes to getting the results you want, like, is it worth it? Um, there, I guess, is a lot I can I could say right now in this video, and I'm just going to blurt out every tip and trick, everything I know about PSA, how to get a 10. Uh, and another reason for that is... Another reason for that is, like, there is a lot of kind of big-time YouTubers... I just get terrible results on their subs. Um, and I don't know if it's just because they don't care enough to pre-grade or something like that or what. Um, but they're, you got to remember, PSA graders, they're human beings. And if your card's a 10, they should give it a 10. But there's a lot of things you could do to increase those odds that we're going to go over. Um, and I'm also going to go over, with this deck, sequential grading. How to get a bunch of sequential Gem Mint 10s in a row. What that means, even though it's pretty self-explanatory, um, and and yeah, this is just going to be a me talking to you about everything I can possibly think of in one un unedited PSA submission video. So let me go ahead and just I'm gonna attach the camera in a much more pleasant stationary position. All right, there we go. Okay, so first of all, look at all these cards notice how I have tabs on all of them. I have brand new soft sleeves on all of them and I have brand new card uh, savers on all of them. Every little thing you can do to convince the PSA or whoever grader that you're serious about your cards, that you're absolutely serious, um, you got to do it because they're grading hundred cards a day. And if you can give that grader the quick notion that you're serious about these cards, that maybe there's a theme to them or they're ordered in a certain way, or maybe, you know, you got a bunch of the same card. Every, any little thing you could do, brand new sleeves, uh, maybe pairing them together. We're gonna go over all of that right now, actually. So first of all, there is no limit on how many PSA 10s you can get, okay? If, you, uh, let's put it this way. Go to my PSA return number three, I think it was. It's like 30-something cards, and like 25 of them or something are PSA 10s. Like, almost every single V-Star Universe card I sent got a 10. There was like one Eternatus that got a 9, 
but it's literally like 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. So this whole theory that, oh, the graders can only give out a couple of 10s, you know, they got to give you the 8s and 9s to... That could be true depending on that specific grader on that specific day. But overall, if you are really good at pre-grading your cards and you and you just do it right, um, you should get a 10 on your 10s. But in case the human factor is there, we're going to go over all the little things to increase your chances of 10s. So here we go. First of all, when you look for Pokemon cards to grade. You should go out and buy them separately. Yeah, you can pull them out of packs, but they might be off-center. English, very off-center from time to time. None of these. <laughs> but if you go out to a, a card shop, look at the card. Look at the front. Don't don't spend five minutes on the front. Flip it over first, because you can waste a lot of time pre-grading the front of a card. And then, oh man, look, there's white or something all over the back, right? So just when you go to a card, let's go over quick pre-grading. Let's do that real quick, because this is one video to rule them all. When you go to a card shop or whatever, you're trying to pre-grade your own card, don't even look at the front. Screw, we don't care. Go straight to the back. Because if you can find out that it's an 8 or below or a 9 or below on the back, and that's not good enough for you, why even waste your time grading the front, right? A lot easier to figure out the condition of a card by starting on the back when it comes to Pokemon. So I'm like, hey, I want to buy this, uh, this Charizard, right? Let me flip it over first. Is, it, is there any white? That's the first thing you see. No, there's no white. All right, well, how's the centering? Uh, centering's pretty good. All right, so there's nothing on the surface either. All right, so now let's flip it over and let's pre-grade the front of the card. So see, so you can take a card and you can pre-grade it in like two seconds just by grabbing it, flipping it over. Oh, look at all that white. Never mind, I don't want to buy this. Boom, and you didn't even look at the front. So there's a quick tip to pre-grading. Always grade the back side of a Pokemon card before the front side. So there's that, right? So that'll save you time when you're picking out cards to grade. Boom. Okay, so what else? You should always be doing a math calculation. As in, even though you think it's a 10, if it comes back in a 9, let's say, does the cost of the card plus the cost of grade, is that, and then I guess shipping if you want to add that in or whatever, um, is that less than the value you could sell it for in a 9? If the answer is yes, then you should submit that card because even if it gets a nine, you're gonna make money on it, right? You want a 10, but it's still valuable on a nine. Now, so that's how I decide. Like, let's say I think a card's a 10 and a 10 goes for 100 and a nine goes for 25 and it costs $15 to grade. And, and then, you know, you factor it all in and it's like, that it's a loss um, if I get it back in a nine or it's a wash. Well, then I might not submit that card. But if even if a nine goes for like 35, 40 bucks, so at least I can make five or $10 on the nine, then of course it's a very low risk to submit graded card. Um, so this, for example, I'm gonna send this in, right? It's gonna cost me $15 to grade. It doesn't matter if it comes back in a 10, a nine, an eight. Well, maybe an eight. So let's see, I paid, what I pay, 60 for this? So 60 plus 15 to grade. We'll call that 75 and you can add $5 shipping and those less than that. So if a PSA 8, let's say, goes for more than $80, I'm pretty sure it does, um, then yeah, I, I absolutely send this card in grade because 8, 9, or a 10, it's still profitable, right? So that's the mathematics for deciding which cards to send in to grade. Obviously, 10s are valuable, but is the 9 still worth the risk? And eights is then when you get really risky and it has to be a serious card, you know, if even an eight is a, a value proposition. So look for value proposition first. Uh, value proposition, you just look up how much the cards, you know, their market value is in that specific grade. So, so there's that, right? Um, so that's how I decide. So we already went over everything needs to be brand new. All this needs to be brand new. Sleeves need to be brand new. I even color coordinate the tab to the, the artwork. Literally, any little thing you can do to show the grader that you are serious, just do it. Like orange for Charizards, you know what I'm talking about? Look, Leon's hair is purple, right? Oh, look at that, a little purple tag. That sounds stupid, but again, these are subconscious things where you're teaching the grader immediately that you're like serious, you know what I mean? 
All right, so there's that. So I'm gonna grab another stack. A lot of people are only gonna be submitting Pokemon cards like this stack right here. I have a card shop where I sell other stuff. So here's another trick. Different types of card stock. See how this is a 40 year old Donkey Kong card? So it has some old paper card stock. Often what I'll do here, let me grab another one. Here's uh, like some Ninja Turtles. These aren't all, this is just, these are right, waiting to be graded. I just have to um, insert Pokemon cards uh, mixed into these stacks. So what I'll do is I'll do like a chunk of Pokemon in a row, right? And then I'll do like uh, a few Donkey Kong cards in a row. And then I'll switch back to modern card stock like Pokemon. And then I'll switch back to vintage card stock like Ninja Turtles. And then I'll go to new modern card stock like Final Fantasy. You know what I mean? So what you're doing is the grader is seeing old card stock and then all of a sudden he's seeing brand new shiny card stock. So oftentimes it, he just finished grading a few of these, right? And then you throw a modern brand new Pokemon card at him. Just subconsciously, he was just in the, all this vintage, you know, just all the stuff that goes along with older cardstock type of cards. But now he's getting this fresh, shiny one, right? So it's going to all of a sudden, just based on that alone, look like a 10. Literally. And then so he's like, oh, you know, this, that, oh, seven, eight, seven, eight. Oh, this one's a nine. And then he see, or, you know, eight. And then he sees this and he's like, holy moly, that's perfect looking. 10, 10. And then he goes back to the older cards down there, right? So that's something you could do. I mean, obviously a lot of people are only submitting Pokemon cards, but just something to think about. The order that you submit a stack in, they're gonna see that, and if there's patterns involved, like Pokemon and then something else and then something else, or all modern from one set, or all a type of rarity, right? Like let's say you, you had a bunch of Crown Zenith and you, you're like doing a bunch of ARs in a row, like two Muse, two Lapras, two whatever, two whatever. And then you quickly go to now your SARs or your really good GG ones. Um, but then you flip back. So you're, you're showing the grader that you have some form of cadence or theme to your submission. So that plus brand new material plus brand new sleeves, you know, you got perfectly centered tabs everything about this is minty and shows that you care so just like that there's like five or six little little things to subliminally let that grader know because let's say right before right before he was grading your cards he was grading some other guy's cards and that other guy just you know threw the cards in he didn't have soft sleeves they were at angles maybe they were all just the same color tab or some crappy tab or mixed tabs just generally didn't look like as professional of a submission and then now he goes to yours where everything's brand new everything's lined up perfectly all the tabs are perfectly centered you got like pairs two of each two of this two of that two of that right um just just based on the presentation alone you already are looking like nines and tens going into it like you're serious about these cards and here's another thing guys doesn't matter if you pay 15 dollars or you pay you know the, the they don't know all they know is they're grading these cards and then they have a piece of paper that has a list of the cards on they don't know how much you paid they don't they don't know who you are they just know I need to hurry up and grade these cards and then move on to the next cards to grade. That's, it's that simple. So again, they are not told, hey, don't give out too many tens. Like refer to, what is it? PSA return number three, one of my previous videos. I literally have like 20 straight V-Star Universe tens, except for, like I said, like one little, I think a Radiant at Um So yeah, you can get a, all, you, you can send in 20 cards and get 20 gem and tens, no problem. You just gotta go about it the right way, make sure you pre-graded well, and make sure you present them well. It really is that simple. Um, all right, what have I missed before we go over sequential grading? We're gonna go over how to get a bunch of sequentially graded pairs. Um, it's pretty obvious what that means, uh, but I'm just gonna show you how I do it. I'm just trying to see if anything. Okay, a couple other random things about grading right now. Um, PSA, yes, PSA is the, the bee's knees when it comes to Pokemon cards. Um, it probably will be for a long time, but why should you consider um, sending your cards somewhere else? So for me personally, um, you should consider sending the CGC if your card is so perfect that you think it can get a pristine or a perfect grade. Now, is that 
the, they go for a small amount, just a little bit more than PSA 10s. To be honest though, if you're not gonna, right now, the way the market's going, if you think you have a perfect card, I would send it to BGS, to Beckett, to, for that black label, because black label cards are going, like, black label is kind of where it's at right now, um, as far as just on eBay auctions. So, PSA has the best database, the best, I guess you could say, reputation. Um, but they have just the most knowledge, the most consistently longest grading Pokemon card company, whatever. So that's why I, I use them. But I'm just letting it be known that some of my more perfect cards, I'm probably going to try to get black labels at uh, Beckett. CGC, no, because the pristine and perfect only go for a tiny amount more than a PSA 10. So whereas the black label Beckett's go for way more than a, a PSA 10, like 10x. Um, like what is a Moonbreon sold for like 12,000 the other day. So yeah, um, anyway, so let's go over sequential grading, something I like to do. Um, and why do I do it? Because it separates your PSA 10 from all the other PSA 10s that, that are being sold. Uh, Alexa, next song, sorry. Sorry to all the other Alexas. All right, so, uh, um, so yeah, I'll do sequence grading. And you're gonna see a stack right here that has like, I don't know, 20 or 30 opportunities for sequentially graded Gem at 10s. And we're just gonna show them off right now, okay? So for the rest of the video, it's just gonna be eye candy. All right. Charizard, a Charizard, a dog hair, a Charizard, a Charizard, a Charizard. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that every time, sorry. But look, all these Charizards are different Charizards are all back to back. So as you can see, just on this Charizard stack alone, I have an Australian Shepherd named Zelda and she is the best dog in the world, but she sheds a little. <laughs> so that was all Charizards right here. Um, so these, you know, these could be a sequential pair. Those could be a sequential pair, uh, preferably these. So look at this. There's a Radiant Charizard on each side of the Charizard V-Star. So if this gets a nine, that's okay, because this can get a 10. So I mean, that this little group of three is relying on this guy. But yeah, so th this could be a sequential pair, or this can be a sequential pair, or they can all get tens, and it could be a giant, giant bunch of sequential Charizards. But just right there, a whole bunch of sequentially graded Gem Mint 10 potential. Now here's sequence graded Zororas. There's Zoror V-Stars, Zoror V, you know, Zoror v Max Altart. So there's another sequential Gem Mint 10 pairing potential. VMAX, oh man. So see, I don't know if you can tell, this card grader has so many scratches on it. Before I submit it, I'm gonna put it in a brand new card sleeve. So look at this. This could sequentially grade with this, or this could sequentially grade with this. Ta-da. Here we go to the Radiance. Just imagine if all those came back at 10, how cool would that be? And yeah, imagine like if you saw an eBay listing, sequentially graded Gem Mint 10 set of blah, blah, blahs. You know, that's pretty cool. It's pretty unique. Sequential Zassian set. Whoo, look at all that. Oh my God, I forgot I added this one. So, we, whew, yeah, that's a lot of Zassian. I love Zassian. I love dogs. Who doesn't love dogs? If you don't like dogs, you're weird. All right, so, ooh, Tapu Lele. So here's another example of two different opportunities to get the same. So here's the celebrations, here's the OG. But then look, here's the celebrations. So either these two can sequentially grade or those two can sequentially grade. There's two opportunities to get the same sequentially graded set. Right there. Okay, V Star Universe Moltres. Here, I'm gonna center this. I feel like. Where are we going here? <laughs> Wait. There we go. Sorry. Okay. So, Moltres. <clears throat> Moltres. Pretty cool if I got those sequentially graded, right? <laughs> uh, Wait, which one was on top? Okay, this one. Zapdos. Yeah. 
So some of these, yeah, I pulled, but most all these, you know, you just go to a card shop and you make sure it's perfectly centered first, you know, you pay four or five bucks or whatever. Hmm, look at that, woo, I love it. And then look, here's just uh, the actual V-Star version. Not English and Japanese. Wait, let's make sure I keep these in order. All right, so check this out. This is all gonna be, uh, I think, ARs V Star and Crown Zenith. But yeah, you get you get the theme. So if you were a grader and you saw this, you'd be like, "Dang, dude, this is legit! Like this guy is trying hard." They're all perfectly centered. They're all English, Japanese, English, Japanese, English, Japanese, English, Japanese. Like, if you were a grader, you might actually have fun for once grading my stack of cards because you're like, oh, here's the English version. Oh, there's the Japanese version. You know what I mean? I'm like giving the grader something kind of entertaining to look at while he's grading. So yeah, I mean, that's it. That's how you uh, sequential grade for tens in this one stack. Gosh, there's just so many both. <laughs> Just so many. Who am I missing? I, uh, oh yeah, I have a, uh, what's his name? Leafeon, I gotta add to this stack. Leafeon and somebody else. But yeah, so there you go. So that was just all sequentially graded. Woo, goodies. All right, so there you go. I think I said enough. So we're up to 20 minutes, uncut, unedited. But yeah, so don't believe anything you hear about PSA not giving out tens because they're scared to give out too many tens it's BS but you can also do a lot to increase your chances anyway guys uh what is it like follow subscribe please uh my Instagram and my eBay store are popping off but this channel is brand new so I could use a little love thanks guys pokedan. oh by the way who am I I'm pokedan.tcg I'm a kid, or I was a kid, who pulled the first edition Charizard, and I was the only kid I even knew. And because I was chubby and I was into video games, pulling a first edition base set Charizard was like the coolest thing to ever happen to me as a child. Um, and that's why I'm doing this now in my 30s. All right, see you guys.